The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, happy Thursday. It's August 4th. And, you know, thanks for taking the time out to come to today's special session on how to find hidden trading opportunities using order flow. You know, order flow, in my opinion, is one of the best ways that traders can view the market. And today I'm going to share with you uh, several things. I'm going to spend some time teaching you how order flow works, how to find hidden trading opportunities in the order flow data, and explain sort of the, the different types of orders that can give you an edge in the market. Now, I'm talking about orders specifically as opposed to the order flow because, you know, order flow originates from the orders. And sometimes people don't uh, distinguish between, uh, you know, the, the different types of orders that are there in the market. I'm going to share with you some tips on how to use the order flow data. And I'm going to share some successful strategies for tr trading order flow. So, you know, just a brief background on who I am, you know, and you know why I think you should listen to me because you know I've been trading you know I've been involved in the market since the early 1990s I started on the CME trading floor the Chicago Mercantile Exchange exchange uh trading floor with Dean Witter rounds I literally started at the bottom and I worked my way up through various trading desks you know a couple of years at the EDF Man trading desk in Chicago um Commerce Bank also in Chicago as a licensed Eurex trader there and I had the futures trading desk at Cargill I even Went to Singapore to set up a trading desk for them when the exchange in Singapore, the, the Symex, was closing down and going fully electronic. And after Cargill, I spent eight years as vice president of futures trading at JP Morgan. Now, in 2015, I started uh, writing a book on trading order flow, and I was the software that I had been using because I was trading for myself after I left JP Morgan in 2013. You know, the software was, was pretty basic. It didn't do... Well, I'll say it didn't do. What it did is it just presented the data for you, okay? But I know that software can do a lot more than that. And so I, I sat down with a programmer as I, was, as I was writing my book, and I said, you know, this is the way that I analyze the order flow. Can you put some of this analysis into, soft, into the software to highlight to traders, you know, where the aggressive buyers are, where the aggressive sellers are, where market is getting weaker in terms of aggressive buying and aggressive selling, you know, different things related to the volume that's actually trading in the market to, you know, improve my trading results. And I didn't expect to become a software vendor, you know, setting up this company order flows. But when I started sharing my charts with other traders, they were seeing, you know, it was, it was like the you know world was opening up in front of them. You know, they were starting to see things that they had never seen before in the order flow. And that's how um, the order flow software company began. And again, you know, it's a software that I created, but the reason I'm talking about it is because the charts you're going to see in this presentation are based off of the order flow trader charts, but you're going to see how quickly and easily you can see things in the order flow. Now, you know, the whole point of doing a presentation like this is to teach you what to see. So whether you're using my software or any other order flow footprint software, you should be able to see the same things. Okay, because that's what it comes down to is being able to identify what's happening in the market. So before we jump in, you know, just a brief disclaimer, right? We're all grown ups, right? We're all adults. We do understand that trading involves risk and only risk capital should be used for trading. Okay, don't go out and, you know, trade with your rent money that's due next month. Okay, because you're putting yourself under a lot of undue pressure. So what again, just to recap what I'll be talking about is understand how order flow works, how to find hidden trading opportunities in the order flow data. And when I talk about hidden trading opportunities, you know, it's things that you're going to be able to see that that people that are looking at a normal candlestick or bar chart just aren't able to see. And I discuss the different types of orders and that are going to give you an edge in the market. You know, the different types of orders that are out there being traded do have an effect on how the market moves. And I'll share with you some tips on how to use order flow data to your advantage. And I'll share with you a couple of successful strategies for trading order flow, things that you can take away and look for in the market in your own analysis. So understanding how order flow works. Now, trading is a lot like life, right? The more you understand how it works, the easier it becomes, right? The trading world is full of jargon and complicated concepts. You know, everyone, I'll go this, I'll go that. 
But once you start to peel back the layers, it's not as daunting as it seems, right? It's, you know, people used to have this, you know, have this image of traders, you know, like, oh, the, you know, they're, they're mathematicians or, you know, things like that. And they have access to information that nobody else has. Well, now we're in a very, we're sort of in the information age. Everyone has access to information and levels of information that were just weren't available to the retail traders before. But the key to doing it is take it one step at a time and be patient, right? You remember, Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither is a successful trading career. But if you're willing to put in the time and effort, you're going to be amazed at how quickly things start to click into place. And that's really the whole point, right? You want to be able to recognize what's happening in the market simply by looking at how the market is trading. And order flow is the one thing that gets you as close to the market as possible. So this is a trading dome, right? The depth of the market. We're all familiar with what this is. We've all seen it in one shape or form. This is from NinjaTrader, right? My software runs on NinjaTrader. But again, you know, we're all familiar with what a trading dome is, right? It shows you the best bid, shows you the best offer, shows you the quantity on the bid, it shows you the quantity on the offer, and it shows you the bids and quantities below the best bid, and it shows you the quantities and offer at different prices above the best offer. Now, most people don't really think about what this means, okay? So if you're working a bid, right, you're what's called a passive buyer. If you're working an offer, you're what's considered a passive seller. Now think of it this way, okay? The easiest way to think of it is you wanna buy a house. You go online, you go to realtor.com or whatever um, you know, website you like to look at for homes, and you see all these homes listed here, different prices. Well, yeah, those sellers, they're putting it out there. They're saying, you know what, this is my home. This is what I think it's worth. They're a passive seller. They're waiting for somebody come up and be aggressive, someone to cross this bid offer line and pay their price. Now, what you don't have, right, on those realty websites is you don't have people putting bids in. But instead, you know, a buyer will go visit a house that's, you know, on sale for at $39.54, we'll call it. And, you know, he'll like the house. You know, yeah, you know what? You know, I, I watch all these shows on TV where everyone goes visits houses and decides which ones to buy and they put a bid in, right? They're gonna be a passive buyer. So, you know, the house is offered at $39.54. They'll put a bid at $39.53. They, they are gonna be a passive buyer in that sense. Now, over the last year or so, you know, in many parts of the world, especially the US, housing market has been on fire. So the house that's offered at $39.54, got a lot of people wanna buy it. Now they're instead of being a passive buyer, say you know what I'm gonna bid thirty nine fifty three and and hope the seller comes down. What they're gonna do is, yeah, you know, I know that if I, I I just visited eight other houses and I tried to buy six of them and I lost out on them, people are gonna be you know they're trying to sell the house at thirty nine fifty four. I'm gonna be aggressive. I'm just gonna here's my here's my offer thirty nine fifty four and buy it. Right? They're not gonna mess around trying to work a bid or anything like that. So, you know, you have different types of buyers and different types of sellers. You have passive buyers, you have aggressive buyers. You have passive sellers, you have aggressive sellers. Now, when they trade, each trade shows up in the time and sales, right? And you're going to see, you know, the time and sales will have different colors, right? Some trades will be in green, some will be in this is orange or reddish, you know, and there's even some that are designated by other, other colors like you know, like pink if it's a new high or a new low. But trades that happen, you know, that are red are aggressive sells, people selling into the passive bids. Trades that are green are aggressive buys, people that are buying the offer. So this is information that you can use, right, as a trader. Right? It's available to you. People say, you know, what difference? Why do I need to know that, right? I, I'm looking at my candlestick chart and, you know, all I, I can see where price is trading, that's all I need to see. Okay, you know, that's basic though, right? You, where's the information that you're seeing on the dome, on the time and sales, where the aggressive traders are? You know, is is this price being um, absorbed, right? Are you seeing a lot of volume go through at a level? You know, there's all this information that's available to you as a trader that you should be using rather than just seeing, well, I see price opened, um, you know, at 39.55 or the bar opened at 39.55, traded up to 56 and then 
had a low of, of 54 and a half. And again, we closed at 55. You know, that, that's, that's just basic information. Now, if you knew that, you know, the, the market, you know, opened up and then there was, it spiked up on very light volume, came back down, closed, you know, in the middle, that's information, right? If you're looking at, you know, say down here and you're seeing all aggressive, you know, massive aggressive buying, strong aggressive buying, you're going to have a good feeling that this market is going to continue in that direction because you have aggressive buyers, right? Now, another thing, you know, you have double tops, right? What's happening at double tops? You know, are there, is there strong buying or is it weak buying as the last buyer bought? Things like that. And all that information is available to you if you know how to um, use it. And the best way to use it is on a order flow footprint chart so that you can see you know, the volume that's trading at price and how aggressive it was or not, you know, because markets exist to facilitate trade, okay? And most of the trade that goes through is just the normal trading activity in the market. But there are times where traders get aggressive for one reason or another, and that's what you want to look for, as well as, you know, areas where there's heavy absorption, right? And the only way you're going to tell if there's absorption is by looking at the volume traded at price. You also want to see where there's, you know, price rejection, you know, the opposite of absorption, where there's very little volume being traded at price. Because as you know, you know, whether it, it's, I'm not just talking about, you know, in trading, but if you've ever run a business, the higher you raise your prices, the less things that, you know, the, the less business you're going to do. And it's the same way in the market, right? The higher the market goes, the less buyers generally there are going to be. Eventually, you know, the market's going to top out and start to move down. So looking at volume, it's a very important aspect of the markets. Now, within the footprint chart, right, the way you categorize the data that you're seeing going through, it's going to give you a lot more data points to analyze. There's delta, right, which is the difference between aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers, right? It's one thing to say, well, there's aggressive buyers here and aggressive sellers, but you want a, a way to um, put it in, in an easy to read format. And that's what Delta is. Now you also have max Delta and min Delta. Max Delta is how strong the aggressive buyers were at one point in a bar. Min Delta is how strong the aggressive sellers were in the bar. Cumulative delta is the running delta total, sort of the running total between aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers for the day. You also have point of control, which is the price level in a bar with the most volume. You also have imbalances. Imbalances are when you have more aggressive sellers than buyers or vice versa, more aggressive sellers than buyers. Right? Did I say that right? More aggressive buyers than aggressive sellers and the opposite, more aggressive sellers than aggressive buyers. And the best part is, all this data is generated from what's actually trading, right? You're not using trend lines and, you know, forms of analysis of, of what happened, you know, yesterday or five hours ago. You're using information based off of what is trading in the market right now. So what do you think is going to be more useful? Knowing when there are aggressive traders and trading is taking place? Or only knowing the last traded price, the open, the high, the low, the close. Well, knowing where the aggressive traders are, because what's going to move the market? It's not going to, you know, knowing simply where the open, high, low closes is going to tell you which way the market's moving. It's where the aggressive traders are and in the direction that they're trading is going to give you clues as to where the market is moving. And that brings us into our next point on finding hidden trading opportunities in the order flow data. And, you know, sort of the way I, I look at it is, you know, when, when you're looking at the order flow data, it's it sort of gives you a different perspective of what's happening in the market that other traders just aren't seeing, right? Because, because again, most traders are only looking at open, high, low, close. But once you're able to see inside the bar, so to speak, seeing where the, the movements are happening internally, it's going to give you a different aspect, you know, just as, you know, you look here at this picture, well, it's a duck, Okay. But you turn it sideways or the other way on the other axis, it looks like a rabbit. Okay. And it's the same thing with the market. You know, sometimes, you know, just looking at it a little bit different is going to give you insight into the market that you didn't just didn't have before. Whereas everyone sees a duck, you're seeing 
a rabbit, right? And it's going to give you an edge over them. Now, 99% of traders use normal candlestick charts, which only give them the four data points, the open, high, low, close. But if you, know, you go back to the days of pit trading, right? You know, the pit is in the middle and there's all these guys on the side sending in orders to the pit. That's the order flow, right? People would fight on the floors to stand, you know, on the top step so they can see the, the guys flashing in the orders. Hey, buy a thousand, sell 500. Seeing that order flow come into the market is why exchanges, memberships were costing hundreds of thousands of dollars back in the days of open outcry, right? Because you had access to see that order flow that people sitting off the floor in an office, looking at a screen, seeing just the open high, low close, weren't seeing. So what you want to be asking when you're looking at the order flow is what's going on, basically. Where is the trading taking place? Was it on the bid? Was it on the offer? There are many ways to use this data. You know, you should always be asking yourself these questions. You know, when a market is making a new high or new low, how is it doing it? Is it doing it on heavy volume? Is it doing it on average volume? Is it doing it on light volume? Because that's going to give you insights into potential market turning points. Right? Or what about when a market is coming into a support or resistance level? Is there heavy trading going on or is it just testing it? Right? These, this is valuable information that you're just not going to see on a normal bar chart. Right? Like this was yesterday in crude oil. Right, We hit our high, came off, started making you know, a move back up to this high, and then it didn't go anywhere. And then it sold off. It right? had a nice sell off of, of about $2 very quickly. In about 20 minutes, it dropped $2. But if you're looking at the order flow, you could recognize what was happening right up in here, right? Now, you know, people will draw a trend line, you know, here, or they'll say, well, this is where your support and, you know, you're going to get short here. Okay, fine. You know, that, that's a bit of a stretch. But if you're watching it, what's happening in here, you know that prices, the way the market is reacting is it's not bullish, it's bearish. And you can get short as close to the top of this move as possible rather than waiting for trend lines to get broken. You know, a market's already moving. You could get short a lot sooner. And the, the bonus part is, since you're getting into a trade much sooner, your stop isn't as wide as it would be if you're using a traditional um, form of analysis, right? Because, you know, if you're drawing a trend line here at 9,600, where's your stop going to be? Well, it's probably going to be up here above this high, 96, you know, 60. But if you're getting short up here at 96.40 based off of what's happening in the order flow, you're still using the same stop. But instead of it being a 60 tick stop, you're, you're getting short at 40 now. Your stop is up at 60. You only have 20 tick stop to catch the same move. Now, this is the order flow. What's happening in here, and I'll get into this, you know, a little bit more in depth as we go along is we're coming back up towards the high. This green line is our high. And, you know, we're seeing very thin volumes happening up here at the top. You know, you've seen one contract trade, two contracts, two contracts, right? You're seeing aggressive selling. You're seeing selling imbalances, right? That's these red numbers in the bar, right? You're seeing negative delta, okay? So you're, you're seeing all these signs of negative order flow that's telling you, you know what? This trade is to the short side. And you can get short in here, you know, 96.35, 96.40. Again, with your stop up here, just above 96.57, as opposed to waiting for this market to break down, you know, 40 more cents before you're convinced that this market's going down. This is E-minis. When is this? This is yesterday's also, right? This is going into the close, right? Just made it like a new high here. And then it's just sort of stalled out around. And then it dropped you know, from 67 area all the way down into the 50s. Again, pretty quick, pretty dramatic move. Okay, well, when you're up here near a high, you always have to ask, you know, what's the order flow look like? Is it bullish? Is it bearish? You know, are we going to keep going up or are we going to go sideways or potentially reverse? Because, you know, if you're, you're high of the day and, and you're going to reverse, you know, it could set up a beautiful trade, a, a big trade for you. And what you're seeing up here at the high is negative order flow, right? Right before it broke down going into the close. So, you know, we made the new high, we got a nice positive delta. 
then we're just off our highs. We're staying off our highs, and it's kind of mixed. Smallish delta, some more buying, you know, positive deltas, you know, negative delta, positive, positive. And then it's just all negative, negative, as you're just going along the high here. So this is the high of the day, 41.70. We're just trading, you know, three points, four points off our high. And all of a sudden, you're just seeing negative delta, negative delta negative delta negative delta and the thing is this delta it's not negative like ah oh, it's just a small number it's quite strong you know it's 600 it's 500 it's 900 it's a thousand right so you know you're up here at the high of the day and you got some strong selling coming in knowing that you have strong selling coming in at the high of the day one you know we're probably not going any higher two maybe you go sideways or three go short. So if you know that one, you're not going higher, you're definitely not going to get it long. Maybe you could go sideways. Okay. Or go short. So two out of three sideways or short, you're pretty safe in taking that trade. All right. Cause if you're just going sideways, okay, you, you could scratch the trade or take a small loss or maybe squeeze out a small winner on a sideways move or catch the nice move down right? The, the 10, 15 point move down that happened pretty quick. And that's just by recognizing that, you know, as we're stuck here near the high and not going anywhere, that this aggressive selling is coming into the market in terms of by looking at the deltas. Now, this is sort of, you know, this was uh, the day before the, the second, um, what was that Wednesday? Or sorry, Tuesday. And you had this nice big push down, and then the market rallied off that. And people will say, well, yeah, you know, you got that candlestick. It's a pin bar. Okay, fine. Well, why didn't this pin bar really work out? Why didn't this pin bar really work out, right? I mean, it's you've got three. Two of them didn't work out. You know, one did. But if you're looking at the order flow, what you're seeing manifest in this order flow was actually very bullish. Right? It, it's a big move down. And on a big move down... Right, you're going to expect to see strong selling, and you did. The min delta was minus 2200, but it closed just at 278. So what's that telling you? Right, you had strong selling down here. This is going into the low of the day. Strong selling, 2200 sellers at one point in this bar as we're making that low. But in this bar, this is why I talk about hidden opportunities. It reversed. It went from minus 2200 and it closed just at 200. It was like 278. But not only you had that strong aggressive selling, 2000 sellers, but then you actually had 2000 buyers come into the market. And, you know, if you're just looking at it, you're just seeing, oh, it's just a red candle down. You know, you're not getting too enthused about it other than the long wick. But if you're watching the order flow, you're getting super excited because. One, you know that there was heavy sellers in that bar, right? But you know that heavy, strong buyers came in. And this is something that a lot of people sort of scratch the surface on with order flow, but don't really go deeper. They just look at the headline number of 278, the negative 278 thing. Well, it's got negative delta. Well, yeah, it's got negative delta, but the delta was much more negative at one point, right? It was minus 2200. And it only closed at minus 200. So it's telling you there was a shift in that bar from heavy aggressive selling to heavy aggressive buying. And this is the best one because it's hidden in there, right? It's just still negative delta. Sometimes you see it turn positive, a bar closes positive, and it's a little bit more obvious. But when a bar eats back almost all its negative selling and closes somewhere near zero or even positive, that's a strong sign, right? So I'm not surprised to see that move that we saw yesterday or Tuesday, up, right? Because I know that all of a sudden now we've got strong, aggressive buying coming in. And then, you know, maybe you're not convinced in this bar. You look at the next bar, positive delta, 300. Okay, then an inside bar here, you know, with negative delta, then positive, 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 more positive delta coming in. So you know that the aggressive buyers are coming in at this low, all right? You can just see it. Whoops, wrong. You can see it manifesting right in here. So maybe you're not convinced in this bar, but even if you were, it's going to give you a great trade. You know, just getting long here around the 90-ish area, you know, your stop here, as opposed to waiting for this market to break up above, you know, the swing high, or maybe you got a trend line coming in here, and you're getting long at, you know, at 05. Would you rather get long at, at 90 or at 05? 
But again, if you weren't convinced in this bar, looking at the order flow developing over these next couple of bars here is also bullish, but you're not seeing it on a normal candlestick chart. On the footprint chart, you can see all that information. You can see that big delta flip, so to speak, in this bar. Okay. Now here's another one, right? This is yesterday. You have this market going up, it pulls back here, goes up, it pulls back again, and then takes off, right? It, it makes this nice, strong mechanical move from 20 all the way up into the 40s. Well, when the market is, you don't know that this is going to happen, but when the market is trading here, you're wondering, okay, are we going to keep going down? You know, is this, you know, you, you draw your swings, you know, one, two, three, four, five, you're going to look for the move, you know, to, to come down below 4,100, um, but it stopped here and then reversed. Well, why? Well, if you're looking at the order flow, you can sort of see why, right? This is that pullback here. This, this bar is this bar right here, okay? This bar is this bar here. So you're coming in here, okay? Nice strong selling, delta minus uh, 1,800. And then you got some positive deltas here, 95, 700, 600. And then some more selling, 300, 400, and then two, okay? And then nice positive delta, 378, 480, 614. So, you know, as you're selling off here, right? All negative delta. As you start selling off again, coming into this low, yeah, you got some selling, but it's weakening. You know, it goes 344, 447. It's kind of even, but then just two. And then on the turn here, it's 378. It's positive. Right? And then it rallies. Right. And not only that, but you're seeing the delta get stronger. 378, 480, 600. So you know that aggressive buyers are coming in. But more importantly, you know aggressive buyers are coming in and being very strong here. Okay. And again, that's the important thing of recognizing what's happening in the market, right? Hidden opportunity is, is hidden here in the delta, right? You're seeing the delta weakening, could get back down to neutral of two, and then it's growing. It's, you know, you have a doji bar here, it's 378, 480, 614, right? So you could be getting long in here at 22 rather than waiting for a breakout of this high up here at 30. Now, the different types of orders that could give you an edge in the market. Well, you got to understand what the different type of trading is, right? I explained that a bit earlier. You know, most traders don't think of the types of orders that come into the market. They just think people buy and people sell. But there are different ways to buy and sell something. There are passive buyers and sellers, and there are aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers. And the difference, recognizing the difference in them, is going to revolutionize your trading. And, you know, and... Most people don't think about this. I, I touched on it earlier, right? If you're looking at the dome, you have your passive buyers on this side, your passive sellers up here. It takes someone to cross the bid offer to be aggressive. Aggressive sellers sell to the passive buyers. Aggressive buyers buy from the passive sellers. Because to be honest, if everyone was just working a bid in the offer in the market, the market will never move. It'll just stay bid and offered. Okay, it's not going to go anywhere. You need someone to be aggressive. You need someone to lift the offer, someone to hit the bid. That's what's going to move the market, right? It's the cleaning out of this 3953.75 and making it 3954 offer, right? That's where the aggressive trading is coming in. You know, if it's 3953 and a quarter, and it's bid there, the market's not going to go lower until aggressive sellers sell all the 53 and a quarters, start selling the 53s, the twos and three quarters. That's what moves the markets down, the aggressive sellers. It's not the passive buyers that are moving the markets down. No, they're, they're happy to sit at that price level. You need the, ag the aggressive traders to come in. So aggressive orders are market orders, obviously. Orders that are paying the offer price or selling at the bid price. Okay, it's people that are cleaning out the bids and the offers. The passive orders are the limit orders to buy on the bid or below the bid, or the limit orders to sell at the offer or above the offer. And when you see these aggressive trades happen, 
it's going to show up on a footprint. Now, it might be a little bit hard to see on here, but you see there's black numbers in a bar and there's red and blue numbers. Black numbers are just your normal order flow that's happening. The red numbers are aggressive cells and it's looking at it in the two-way auction. What's happening, the volume traded on the bid versus the volume traded on the offer. And when you're seeing you know, sort of these clusters of aggressive selling and clusters of aggressive buying, you start to get a feel of which way the market is going to move because you know that markets move on aggressive trading. So you're coming into the low, right? Okay, you just make a new low. You got some aggressive sellers come in. This is probably a stop that got triggered right here as you made a new low. But then you made a new low, you start bouncing up and you're seeing a lot of aggressive buying, all these blue numbers in a bar. So what do you think the market's going to be doing, right? You got all aggressive buying, market is probably going to keep going up, right? This is where the aggressive buying came in. Now, it wasn't as dramatic, like a big move up, but knowing that you have aggressive buying coming in here, especially after a big move down, well, after you have a big move down and all of a sudden you see aggressive buying coming in, you know that that move lower is probably over, right? That's information that you can use to position yourself to find a good trade, right? Because now you're going to be looking for long trades as opposed to trading it from the short side. You know, when you get up towards a high, high of the day right here, and you see aggressive selling coming in, you know, as the market is rallying, you're expecting to see aggressive buying, right? That's why you see these bars with all these blue volumes in here, right? Because that's the aggressive buying that's taking place. Then the market turns here and you have aggressive selling right at the high of the day. You know, it's a bar after the high has been made. But again, this bar got within one tick of the high. All of a sudden you see aggressive selling coming in. What do you think the trade is to take? Oh, I got to get long. Right? You don't want to be fighting the order flow. You know there's aggressive selling coming in. You should be trading it from the short side. And what happens? The market sells off. It doesn't keep going up because now you know that there's aggressive selling taking place in the market. So that's, you know, understanding the different types of orders, you know, the aggress the difference between aggressive trading, market orders, orders hitting the bid or lifting the offer versus orders that are just sitting on the order book which don't move the market. Now I'm going to share with you some tips on how to use order flow data. So there are many ways to use order flow in your trading. Okay, so look for trading opportunities where there's a sudden increase in buying or selling pressure. This usually indicates a change in market direction, right? And just as I was just telling you, in the form of imbalances is an easy way to do it, right? This is the chart from earlier. Pressure can come in the form of imbalances, either buying imbalances or selling imbalances. But you want to be looking at that in reference to where the market is trading. If a market is making new highs and you're seeing buying imbalances, okay, that's what you expect to see. But if a market is making a new high and you're seeing selling imbalances, well, okay, now I got a different form of pressure coming in. Maybe this market will react to that. And it often does because what you're seeing now is a change in um, market perception, right? You're seeing the aggressive selling coming in, whereas on the way up, you're seeing the aggressive buying come in. Because if you're on a move up, you have aggressive buying, what does that tell you about moves down? You have aggressive selling, and this is your first sign of aggressive selling. You could also look at delta, right? You could see what the change in delta, right? Because delta is the net difference between aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers in a bar. So while imbalances deal internally in the bar, you know, at specific levels in a bar, you know, the differences between aggressive buying and aggressive selling, delta gives you sort of the net, net, net for the bar. So as you can see here, you're at your low of the day, but now all of a sudden you see aggressive buying creep in, positive delta, more positive delta, more positive delta, it goes 52, 54, 192. And the market does what? It rallies, right? Because the aggressive buyers are stepping in at the low of the day. This is what we call a delta surge, right? Where the delta is incrementally increasing in a direction. Now, the second tip I give you is be careful, extra careful when trading against prevailing order flow. If there's a strong trend in place, it's likely that price will continue to move in that direction, right? Everyone says, 
trend is your friend. Well, yeah, trend is your friend. So don't trade against it. And the same thing with the order flow, right? This was Tuesday. I right? market got a full head of steam and you know rallied, you know, from 41 oh, 41.10 all the way up to 41.40s, right? You don't want to fight this. You know, I'm gonna get short here. You know, there's people that like to sh to sell highs. Uh, I gotta get short here. Okay, you didn't get stopped out. I got short here. I got stopped out. Don't fight it. Go with it. But you have to be able to recognize that it's a go with market. And order flow is going to help you to determine the conditions. And there's a condition that I, I describe as a flow-driven market. And what a flow-driven market is, it's when you have bearish order flow. Okay, If your market's trending up, like in this case, you have some signs in the order flow that is potentially bearish, but then the market just runs right over it. When a market runs over a certain type of order flow, like bullish or bearish, it's telling you that there are bigger things at play in the market, you know, more macro views changing, right? Because a simple thing with order flow is, is a delta divergence, right? Like for delta divergence is when you're at a new high or new low and you have um, opposite delta. So you're at a new high, you should have positive delta. But if you're at a new high, you see negative delta, new high, negative delta, new high, negative delta, because that's the first sign of a potential change. But if you start seeing these deltas, divergences get taken out relatively quickly, you know that the market is under a full head of steam and trying to get short there because there are people that will sell you a system for $500 that's just telling you to get short when you have a new high and negative delta or a new low and positive delta. Well, okay, on a normal rotational market, that's fine. But on days where it's flow driven, right? Days where it's just one way directional move, you're going to get stopped out you stopped out stopped out so you have to be able to recognize pretty quickly that you're in a flow driven market and one of the easiest ways is when you see bearish order flow come in and it gets taken out in the next bar like it was here and up here that those are not the, you know don't think of getting short in those days you should be thinking getting long you should be turning the picture so to speak the duck and the and the rabbit picture to get a better perspective of, okay, I have my bearish order flow. If the market's not reacting the way it should, chances are it's a flow-driven market. Don't go against the flow, right? We're up here at, at the high, and it's just sort of going sideways, and you're seeing the aggressive selling coming in here, right? All that negative delta, but in the bars, you're seeing the selling imbalances, right? So that's telling you that, you know what, this market is positioned to the short side, don't go against the flow. Now, use order flow to help confirm other technical indicators, right? If you see a potential trading opportunity on your charts, check the order flow to see if there's any supporting evidence for your trade idea. So for example, again, it doesn't matter what technical indicator you use. I don't use technical indicators. I use order flow, but I know some people that do, right? And when their indicator turns down, you know, crosses below uh, the zero line or something, this is DMI. Look at what's happening in the order flow, just to give you that extra confirmation. Okay, we cross below the DM, the zero line. Yeah, I see negative deltas. Okay, it's probably a good short. Okay, or Bollinger bands, right? Uh, I like. I I used to use Bollinger bands many years ago. I don't anymore. But when I mix it with order flow, I'm always looking for these areas where I see support form and points of controls give you nice support and resistance levels. I'm always looking for support that just appears, you know, right around a Bollinger band just to reinforce that. Hey, you know what? That like here, right? Because we could cross through a Bollinger band and keep going down. But when I see that support form, I'm looking for that move back inside the Bollinger band. So, you know, use order flow to help confirm your technical analysis. Now, further to that point, with technical analysis, look at, you know, support and resistance levels, right? And it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to have fancy support and resistance levels. You know, as long as you have basics of knowing where support and resistance is, watch where, watch when the order flow trades around those levels, okay? Because that's where you're going to see, you know, our buyers stepping up and defending their positions or 
are, you know, if you're coming into a support level, are sellers really interested in taking it through that support level? You know, you're looking for heavy volume, you're looking for light volume. And, you know, one of the obvious support levels is, you know, open, high, low, close, right? So this, this is a support level right here, this line. And as the market came down in here, you traded a lot of volume. It came down, it met that support, and then it bounced up from it, right? You had buyers down here to absorb all the selling that was happening. Whereas here is the opposite. Now we're coming into resistance. And initially, there was some good volume that was traded there. But as you make a second run into that resistance, it only trades five contracts. Now, this is 10 years. It's a five-minute chart. And normally, you're trading thousands of contracts per price level. All of a sudden, you trade five. Well, what's that telling you? So traders aren't interested at this level anymore. And the market reacted accordingly, it sold off. If you know traders aren't interested in taking this market higher, you only traded five contracts, okay. What's the trade? The trade is to the downside. <coughs> now stacked imbalances, right? Look for stacked order flow imbalances. An order flow imbalance occurs when there are more buyers, more buy orders than sell orders and vice versa. The trade. A stacked order imbalance is when there are three or more imbalances stacked neatly on top of each other. Now, order flow imbalances indicate that the market is about to move in a particular direction and can be used to make trading decisions. So here's a market that was mostly going sideways. Then as it starts breaking out, you got to stack selling imbalance. Well, I know that aggressive sellers now are rushing for the exit door. I got to get out of this trade. You know, everyone that was buying it, trying to get long is now rushing to sell it, to get out, right? As the market starts dropping, and eventually goes lower and lower, okay, right here. Again, market hit a new low, the stack selling a balance, okay, maybe it's a stop that got triggered, that's what you would expect at a new low. But as the market starts bouncing back, you got stacked buying imbalance, aggressive buyers are coming into the market. So let the market tell you what the best opportunities are and give you, that's gonna give you an edge over other traders. So let me share with you a couple of successful strategies for trading order flow. Now there are many different strategies that can be used when trading order flow. And people ask me, Mike, what's the best strategy? And to be honest, I have many different strategies of looking at the order flow because the market conditions are so dynamic, they're always changing, okay? There's, there's no, you know, markets are fractal, right? You, you get things that look alike, but there's no two exactly the same. And market conditions change. Sometimes you're in a trending market. Sometimes you're in a consolidating market. Sometimes you're in a range bound market. It really depends. And you're going to see, look for different things in different market conditions. But you know, here are three. There's actually two. Uh, aggressive selling near a high or aggressive buying near a low. Delta weakness at highs or lows. So there's two, right? Aggressive selling and delta weakness. So... Aggressive selling near a high or aggressive buying near a low. The market has just put in a move up or down and is now attracting traders to come in and participate. Look at the delta, look at the imbalances. Okay, so here, e mini's just made a new high. And then what do you see? Do you see aggressive buying still? No, you're seeing aggressive selling coming in. You're seeing selling imbalances in the bars. Two, two. Okay, what do you think the trade is? It's to the downside, it's not to the upside. You know you're at your high, aggressive sellers are coming in, both by looking at the imbalances, by looking at the delta. What's happening on this pullback? Well, you pulled back, you got some aggressive selling, great. But now you got a bar, has got one, two, three aggressive buys. Aggressive buyers are coming in, it's got the positive delta. Your negative delta is, is gone, it's flipped the positive delta. Right. What do you think the trade is? It's to the upside. Keep it simple, right? You just follow the direction of the imbalances. Market's coming off, selling imbalances. Market starts to rally, buying imbalances. Market's coming off, selling imbalances. Market starts to rally, you're seeing buying imbalances. Look at the deltas, negative deltas as the market moves down, positive deltas as the market moves up, negative deltas as the market's moving down, positive deltas as the market starts moving up. Now, the second one is delta weakness at highs and lows. So as the market is making new highs or lows, how is delta acting? Is it stronger directionally or is it weakening? If the delta is weakening, the move is probably over. But when I talk about weakening, I'm talking about is it still strong? Are you making new highs on strong positive delta? 
or is it kind of petering out? So here is this market is rallying. It's a five minute chart. As this market is rallying, yeah, nice positive deltas, 1100, 1400. And then you see negative deltas start creeping in. You, you know aggressive sellers are coming in. 800, 400. And then positive again, 542. A new high, yay. But delta is only 40. Okay, that, that's a sign of weakness. You're at your high. Where's the aggressive buyers? Why aren't they coming in? And this bar actually had positive 952 delta, max delta. And it closed at 40. So it gave back almost 1,900 of its aggressive buying turns to aggressive selling. And then you make a new high here, negative delta, a strong negative delta, 500. So you know that the positive delta is weakening, and now you're starting to see the negative delta creep in. What do you think the trade is? It's to the downside. It's not to the upside. Here, market is selling off. Right? It's nice sell-off, right? Nice strong negative deltas, 400, 500, 300. Then positive 600, and then just negative 50, uh, 94. Then at the low, big positive delta, 1200. This 1200 is you know almost your strongest delta one way or the other, going back to this bar, which is 2000. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Over the last nine bars, it's your strongest delta, but it's positive. Do you think this market is going to still go down? No, trade is to the upside. Now, this is 10 years. Similar action. Market's moving up. Nice positive delta. High of the day. Right, it's a double top here. Delta minus 7,000. This is your strongest delta one way or the other over any other delta on this chart. And it's negative. What do you think the market's going to do? You think the market's going to still go up? No. Chances are the market's going to sell off. Which it did. You know, and, and that's how using this information that's available to you, it's there for you. You don't need level two data. You don't need level three or level four, just the simple top level data. But you need a way to organize it that you can use it in your trading. So over the last 45 minutes or so, I've covered a lot of ground, right? You've learned about the basics of order flow trading, and hopefully you've seen how it can help you make better trading decisions. You should have also learned about some of the key tools and resources that are available to order flow traders. So hopefully you will agree this has been time well spent. I, I think so. It's just a short amount of time. You've, we've covered a lot about a complex topic, right? About understanding what you're seeing in the order flow. Now, of course, I can't cover everything in a quick training session like this. I wish I could, but there's so much to, more to learn about order flow trading. And I hope now you have a good understanding of order flow basics. And if you're interested in learning more, I got a special deal for you, a special offer. You know, you took the time out to watch this training today. You know, I want to give you something to make it worth your while. And you're going to be excited. The order flow trader software, which you've seen in this presentation, in this training, I got a special deal for you on how to get it. So if you've ever felt like you're struggling to understand something, only to have it click into place and suddenly become easy, that's the power of understanding how something works. Once you understand the underlying principles, life becomes much easier. Take trading, for example. If you don't understand how trading works, it can be very confusing and frustrating. And the order flows trader software is like taking you know, the, the, all the knowledge that I've gained over 25 years of trading at an institutional level and putting it into a software. So you could see what's happening in the market and more importantly, understand it and trade that what you're seeing. So the thing is, software is one part of trading, right? It's one thing to have software, but you have to know how to use the software. If you don't, it's going to be pointless, right? That's why I focus on providing a lot of education on how to trade with order flow, right? Because I want you, my students, to be successful. I want you to know that starts with giving you the tools you need to understand the market, not just, oh, here's software, go figure it out on your own. No, here's software, here's how to use it, right? A lot of instructional videos, a lot of training, even live training, which I'll get to in a second. <clears throat> so when you get my order flow software, I'm going to also give you access to my order flow trading course for free, which I sell for $2.97 every day on my website. 
but also I'll give you access to my order flow inner circle video series. It's 56 videos with advanced order flow tricks, tips, and forms of analysis. And you can only get it now through this special offer. You can't buy this on my website. Now the software, I normally sell it for $8.99. It runs on NinjaTrader. It's very easy to set up. The training is $2.97. The Inner Circle video series is $497. That's $1,600. Yeah, it's a commitment, but you're not going to pay that much. As long as you're willing to make that commitment, I'm willing to knock off a lot of that price. Now, again, I realize it's one thing to learn from videos and, and training sessions like this, but what really takes traders to the next level is live training. And each Tuesday, I do a live training session from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central Time. And I've been doing this for the last three years. Since I started doing this, you're seeing some other companies starting to offer things like that. But in the past, nobody ever did. And, you know, people, I realized how important this was to trader development by having a live session where traders can come in and ask me anything about the markets or, or the software or order flow. And if you can't attend it live, there's replays. We've got over 170 replays now. Here it says 157, but it's, it's up to over 170 already. And again, you can watch the replay if you can't attend live, you know, and you, if there's something you want me to discuss, you can either ask it live or you can shoot me an email and I'll talk it, about it in the training room. Now, some people charge, you know, $200 and more a month for this. You're going to get that for free. I don't charge for it. It's, it's a free resource for users of the order flow trader software. And what I discussed today is just a small sample of kinds of things I talk about on a weekly basis in the live group training or what you can find in my inner circle video series. But I go into much more detail about all aspects of trading from technical analysis, fundamentals, uh, talk about different trading strategies I use, how to adapt them and changing market conditions and much more. It's really an, an open forum to discuss whatever um, you like. Okay. So to get my Orderflows trader software, go to orderflows.com slash oft5 put the link in the chat just scroll down all right it's going to take you to this button now there's some videos you could watch and you can see it's only going to cost a one-time payment of 749 right you're not paying 1600 dollars as, as i explained earlier you're paying 749 it's almost a thousand dollars off you're going to get access to the order flows trader software the order flow trading course the inner circle video series weekly live group trainings and as a special bonus, I'm going to give you my Orderflow's Playbook trading course. So just go to this button here. Click on that button. Buy now. It's going to take you to PayPal. PayPal processes your payment. I don't do it. PayPal does all that for you. Just check your email that you have registered with PayPal because that's where all the download information and course logins and license tokens are going to uh, go be sent to. And it's just a one-time payment of $749. So go to orderflows.com slash oft5.html. There's no monthly recurring payments You're not I'm not, or, or yearly. You know, you're not in one year and I could get charged again, you know, another $749. No, it's just a one-time payment. Now, you do need to pay your data fees. That's outside of me and your Ninja Trader fees. Okay, so just bear that in mind. There, there are some fees you know to, to run the software like on the trading platform of ninja trader that you're going to have to do now it will run on the free version of ninja trader as well people ask me that all the time if you want to say you're executing trades through a different front end but you just want to use ninja trader as your charting platform you can do that you can download the free ninja trader version get my software install it you just need a live data feed so as a special bonus for Investors Expo, I'm going to give you access to my order flow playbook, which I normally sell for $297. You can get that for free. It's, it's a nice course on trading with the order flow. It's, it's more of an advanced course, but you're going to get it for free. And there's about 10 or 11 additional trade setups in there that you can take advantage of. So get started now. Go to orderflows.com slash oft5.html and get going so what you're going to get is the order flow trader software normally it's 899 the order flow trading course which is normally 297 the order flow inner circle video series which is 497 the access to the join the live weekly group trainings you know again i, I don't want to put a price on it but if i were it'd easily be 200 dollars a month 
and you're going to get access to the order flow playbook, which is normally $297. You can get that as well for free. So just go to orderflows.com slash oft5.html. It's just a one-time payment. Now, you know, early on, I discussed that I had written a book on trading with order flow. And if you want to get that book, go to orderflows.com slash book.html. It's a 150-page book. You're not going to get the actual hardcover. You're going to get access to the digital download. Just enter your name and email and hit submit, and you'll be taken to the page that you can download it. So get started now with the Orderflows Trader software. Go to orderflows.com slash oft5.html. And I'll see you guys on the inside. Yeah, you know, I got a couple minutes here. Um, I'll take a look at this questions here um, real quick. Yeah, you know, if you use TOS, I mean, you could, like I said, you could use the free version of Ninja Trader and just put my software on it and you could just get a data feed for it. Um, I got here late, looks interesting. Yeah, there will be a replay. Uh, let's see, great, got this. But aggressive buying and aggressive selling takes place in the same time. No, aggressive buying and aggressive selling don't take place at the same time. Aggressive buyers buy from passive sellers. Aggressive sellers sell to passive buyers. So remember, there's bids and offers, right? The bids and offers are passive traders, right? The bid is a passive buyer. The offer is a passive seller. So when someone crosses the bid offer line is when they become aggressive. Um, do I use this on a one minute chart? Yeah, I use one minute chart. I actually use 30 second charts as well. I use five minute charts. Um, in some markets, I do keep an eye on 15 minute charts. I also use tick based charts. I used to use range based charts, but the markets are moving a bit faster now over the last couple of years. That's why I sort of went back to time based charts. Um, yeah, do I use any confirmation besides Delta? Yeah, I do. And there's just not enough time to get into it. Um, yeah, order flow is all about the volume inside the candles. Yeah, because you know, you, you're watching at how the trading is happening inside of the bar, so to speak. Think of it as, you know, there's no more open outcry trading pits. But imagine if you were standing on the trading floor, what you're looking at in the order flow footprint chart is essentially what was happening. You know, you can see where the buying is, where the strong buying is, where there's price defense, you know, if there's a big bidder in the market. Right. And that's just information you don't see on a normal um, bar chart. All right, guys, I kept you here for about an hour. I'll leave it there. So, again, you know, just go to orderflows.com slash oft5 to get started. And I'll see you guys on the inside. So thanks, Anna. Thanks for having me. And again, thanks, everybody, for taking some time out of your busy days. And I hope to hear from you guys soon. Bye bye.